Well, what we have now is Jordan Peterson, and I was, uh, I, you know, I was just checking in on Jordan Peterson as you do, seeing what what he's uh, what he's putting out there, and I uh, I found this. So here's the first uh, first two minutes of this clip. Interview that's been most popular. Hmm. Hmm. Noam Chomsky, and you're 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 one of the reasons why because I was the first person, if not the only person, to ask him about you directly. Uh oh. So I don't know about that. So there's something we could talk about right away. So what did he have to say? Well, essentially, you're Hitler, as you know. And, oh yeah. 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 And uh, and so why do you think and, he thinks uh, that? I think that people who are on a certain side on the political spectrum believe their side stands for what's good, and the opposite side is what's not good. One of the see that's so tricky, man. Talking about better left and center, which we'll get to later, is how to define the left and the right. It's decidedly difficult. Almost everyone has a different definition. Chomsky would say, "Well, the left is freedom, and so anything that's on the right is anti-freedom." And the right people who are on the right or identify with being as such would perhaps categorize it as the opposite. Yeah, well, it's interesting, at least, that they might circle around claims to some, uh, let's say, virtue that both of them would admire, like freedom. Right? Mm -hmm. So there's some agreement there, despite the differ difference. Did he point to anything particular about what I hypothetically thought that made me not uh, an acceptable sort of creature? No. It's somewhat it's somewhat hearsay in the sense that he read an article based on you. So he didn't watch you directly. He read Nathan Robinson's critique of you, which I'm sure. Oh you yeah, well that'll do it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old yeah. Nathan, he's he's quite the character. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, beautiful! I had not seen that. That's uh, that's incredible. I'm sure Chomsky didn't say he was Hitler because my article, I mean, Chomsky's <laughs> basic take is the take of my article, which is that uh, Peterson often speaks such gibberish that it's hard to actually get uh, a coherent <laughs> ideological program out of him, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I, I would be shocked if, if Chomsky said anything like that he was Hitler. Uh, uh, but I do believe that, that the guy's uh, misinterpreting. Yeah, uh, the he says, yeah, this guy says, just a heads up, Chomsky did not say this to Kirk. Kirk completely misunderstood a comment of his concerning Peterson. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, I wouldn't expect, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect Chomsky to be a fan. Uh, but and, and I think that, you know, quite apart from having read your article, uh, that, you know, I mean, look, what's, what's one of the things that, uh, you know, one of the things that I like the most um, that, um, you know, Chomsky has said in, in a sort of more like abstract theoretical register than most of what Chomsky writes is that the way we should look at hierarchies is that, um, you know, that we, we, we de don't need to just sort of reject them a priori wholesale, but like we should, we should look at them with suspicion, you know, they, they, they should have to, you know, that like, like you should, the burden of proof should be. I'm thinking that they need to they need to justify themselves, and of course, this is like on a sort of deep spiritual level. This is exactly the opposite of to the extent that he's actually saying things and not just babbling. You know, the exactly the opposite of what Peterson thinks. Yeah, I um, and I still want to get Peterson to debate me. You know, he keeps saying things like uh, like this about me. Uh, he said, like, he, I, I think, I mean, I must have gotten under his skin at some point because he sent a number of tweets uh, uh, indicating he'd like to talk to me. But I emailed, I've emailed a couple times his publicity email now, and they have not replied to me. So if anyone knows how to uh, how to goad Peterson into uh, into a debate, I still I still want to do this. Now, but now, now I got a new blurb, which is Nathan, quite a character. What, what did he <laughs> say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um yeah exactly i i think that um well anyway people should uh people should read the article it's the uh the intellectual we deserve is that is that the uh it's called the intellectual we deserve yes because i <laughs> i blame all of us for jordan peterson 
You know, it's easy to look at Jordan Peterson and think that man is a babbling fool. But the question is, why have we built a society in which this babbling <laughs> fool is selling millions of copies of his books? That's the real question. And for that, uh, blame uh, is widespread. Yeah, now that there's no arguing with that. Um, so I, I, I think I, I should actually also shout out whenever this cluster of topics comes up. Uh, I, I think that, um, I think definitely the most entertaining critique of Jordan Peterson that anybody has done is still the one from 2018 from, uh, from Natalie Wynn on mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. the, uh, the, the YouTube like video essay uh, where, you know, I mean, she's, I mean, it's, it's, it's Natalie at her most entertaining, but also she has like, I, I think you know, I mean, she makes some really, really good points in it, including the fact that like, so uh, Peterson's central thing about how, uh, he should be, um, you know, about how, you know, human beings are innately hierarchical because of blah, 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 lobsters, blah, 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 evolution, you know, uh, blah, 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 you get archetypes uh, that, and therefore, you know, the left by trying to destroy hierarchies is, is you know, just trying to mess with human nature. And this could only lead to chaos and disaster and gulags that, you know, she points out that this is, this is a time, like, this is a timeless argument that there is absolutely nothing about this that's specific to anything that people are arguing about now. Like you could just cut and paste that argument and have it be made by a uh, French monarchist in the 1780s or, you know, a, uh, an well, William Buckley makes it in the debate we're watching tonight. <laughs> yeah, fair <Right>. enough. <laughs> uh, he probably does. I'm, I'm not trying to, He's, yeah. He has the part where he talks about how the women's movement, um, you know, where, where Hitchens defends women's liberation and uh, Buckley launches into the classic, like all revolutions produce something worse than what came, than the thing that they were um, against. Yeah, right. And I mean, this is, this is no different, you know, than, um, yeah, I mean, you could have an antebellum slaveholder say that you could, you could have, you know, anybody mm -hmm. say that because there's nothing about it that's specific to why particular instances of social progress is bad. You know, it's, it's, it's just a sort of general, you know, anti-social progress argument that's, uh, that's, that's equally good uh, or, uh, or equally bad, uh, regardless of context. Um, yeah. That was an important realization for me, uh, helping to understand the common structure of uh, the conservative narrative. And uh, Albert Hirschman's The Rhetoric of Reaction was really informative for this because uh, he, he talks about how conservative arguments are often all kind of the same. They're all this social change that you want is going to create something worse than um, what we have already. Uh, it's going to undo uh, it's going to undo civilization and uh, it's all of our traditional values will disappear. And every gen, and Hirschman goes through, you know, hundreds of years of reactionary rhetoric. It shows they, they say the same, same things. Natalie, though, takes Jordan Peterson's ideas more seriously than I do. I, I treat him <laughs> as someone who is mostly bereft of ideas, but uh, she actually treats him intellectually seriously. So he, and he has not responded to her critique either because uh, he's not an intellectually serious person. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, I mean, he's he's certainly not. Uh, I mean, it, I think if anybody had any lingering doubt about that, I think that the uh, the tweet that he put out oh, uh, a couple days ago, uh, that where where he finally he finally answered Zizek's question from 2019, and he he mm. put out his list of the postmodern neo Marxists, uh, and uh, and it's and it includes like. It includes numerous people who aren't either postmodernists or or Marxists or or anything like that. You know that they you know, like like who are just none of the above. You know it includes like Catherine McKinnon, uh, who uh, who actually was an extremely harsh critic of postmodernism. I mean, it's it was basically just a, a list of people Peterson has heard of, who he <laughs> vaguely associates with values he deplores. So it's like you Naomi know, Klein, Tanahisi Coates, although he put a second hyphen between Tanahisi <laughs> and Coates, uh, which is either 
like a deliberate attempt to mock Coates' name, in which case it's kind of gross and racist, or uh, ignorant. Um, but, uh, but, but both no, I mean, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I expect it's ignorant. In fact, what I suspect it really is is this sign of deep sloppiness, right? You know, that, that, yeah, that he yeah. hasn't, you know, he, like... He hasn't read a book by a single one of the 20 people he cites. I, I guarantee you he has not read a book by any of them. Yeah, well, um, I, I think... You know, if anybody, yes, if anybody is watching and, and knows a way to uh, to get in touch uh, with, uh, with with Jordan Peterson to actually make this happen, yeah, let's uh, let's let's do that. He has he, he has his arguments, which he doesn't do ever. No, no, he cer he certainly does it right. You know, I I, I think um, I uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I would say like. You know, I, I certainly like Slavoj Žižek a lot more than you do. And, and I, I think, and, and I do have my defense, as you know, of like what he did in that debate. But I also think that it's not a coincidence, like that this is the one that he was interested in having that, you know, that, for example, like Richard Wolf had had made the offer, you know, beforehand and he, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't going to have that, right? You know, and, and I, I also think that it's, there's a reason why, you know, Maybe he will now, right? But there's a reason why in the past, you know, he, he wasn't interested in in, uh, in doing it with you because I, th I think that he, I think with anybody who's who argues in a more analytical way, I I, I think that he's worried that he would be embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pin him down on stuff. We're going to go, okay, let's go through these figures and uh, you're going to justify how each one of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, corporate uh, corporate consultant Robin D'Angelo is a postmodern neo Marxist. Uh, uh, the you know, like like it's just barely anybody on that list is even Marxish. You know, never mind a Marxist, and you know, and and, and there are a lot of non post you know people who just haven't written anything one way or the other about postmodernism. There's at least one person who's a very harsh critic of postmodernism. Uh, I, I, I think that's exactly like, I, it's just a list of, uh, it's just a list of, you know, until, you know, writers who he, who he sees as, um, who he sees. I'm glad as part he put the this. list out. I'm glad yeah. he did because people ask him, you know, okay, well, who do you mean? What do you mean? And by answering that question, he reveals that he doesn't know what he's talking about at all, right? That that by answering, by being forced to actually list who the postmodern neo-Marxists are, he showed that he is just he he he's talking out of his ass, um, you know. And uh, Naomi Klein, what what? <laughs> Which what's postmodern about the shock doctrine? You know, Her yeah. book is about the Green New Deal. What, what are you talking about? Sorry. Yeah. No. Exactly. <laughs> like I, I was, okay. She's a. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's. She's. I mean, she's not a. I mean, I don't think she's particularly, you know, philosophically inclined. She's just somebody who. She's just somebody who writes, you know, earnestly and enthusiastically about uh, about social democratic policies. So. You know, it, like how, how how that has anything to do with uh, with any of the elements of that yeah. label is kind of beyond yeah, he's me. A but very stupid man. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns. All of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish. <laughs>